Let's say go. The National Lampoon Radio Hour begins on XM Comedy 150. All right? Ready? Go! Tonight, the National Lampoon Radio Hour will only be 30 minutes long in order that we may bring you, in its entirety, The Canadian Show. The American dollar took another pounding on the international exchange today, and the pound took a franking as the Deutsche Mark and the yen lorded it with familiar Axis-like arrogance over the Yankee buck that rebuilt their bombed-out bailiwicks from scratch. Well, this is one Canadian who thinks it's time to speak up for the American dollar or else unpeg our currency from theirs, which, given the high possibility of an invasion, seems unwise. Can you name me one nation that's anything like the Americans? I thought not. Whenever there's a fire, a flood, an earthquake, or another act of God anywhere in the world, who gets there first with cameramen, photographers, reporters, and color commentators? The Americans. Yet, when a tornado hit a Midwestern town, causing what President Nixon called the worst disaster he had ever seen, with the exception of his personal tax returns, maybe, did one country from Southeast Asia send in an eyewitness news team? I ask you. Whenever, for 200 years, the people of Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Chile, Bolivia, Mexico, the Philippines, Libya, Korea, and Cambodia didn't know what was good for them, who helped with CIA agents, Marines, counterinsurgency forces, and bushels of laundered cash? The Americans. When tiny Vietnam found itself being overrun by Asians, who came to its aid? I, for one, am damn glad the Americans had the generosity to invade Canada three times, or we'd never have found out who our real friends are. And when Canada decided to dam James Bay, flood the tundra, and destroy the ecology of the North in order to produce hydroelectric power, it was the Americans who offered to buy that power at a price they could afford. Come on, let's hear it. Who but the Americans could have produced the DC-10, the technological breakthrough that's done more to control the population explosion than anything since the fragmentation bomb? You talk about your Japanese technocracy and you get the electric dildo. You talk about your German technocracy, and you get 18 minutes of silent recording tape. But you talk about your American technocracy, and you get men on the moon playing golf and drinking tang. And right here on our Canadian streets, there are draft dodgers, free to come and go as they please, as long as they don't talk out of turn or get too near the border. And many of them have pockets full of letters from mom and dad back home, begging them to turn themselves into Leavenworth for the commies they are. Sure, the Americans are in a bind right now, but they put their scandals right in the store window where they're sold to the highest bidder. And when they come out of this, with their flags flying at half-mast, and they will. Who could blame them if they said the hell with the rest of the world and gave back the 60% of Canadian land and 70% of Canadian industry they own? And where would we be then? Would we know what to do with it? I ask you. I'm one Canadian who's damn tired of watching the Americans kicked around, and I'd give up watching the American news if it wasn't the only channel I got. And another thing, President Nixon announced the other day that when he's paid off his debts, his lawyers, and all his back taxes, he'll be broke. And not a single Canadian has offered to help. Quick Canada quiz. What do you get when you cross a Canadian and a Polak? A grain elevator operator who speaks a little French. From out of the frozen Canadian Arctic come the adventures of Corporal McInerney of the Royal Northwest Mounted Library Police and his wonder moose, Yukon Gwen. Yukon Gwen, the Wonder Moose, has led Corporal McInerney to the desolate cabin of Frenchy Lemaird, who has broken the unwritten code of the Arctic by keeping the only copy of the Kama Sutra within 5,000 miles for more than three months. Okay, Frenchy, I know you're in there. Open up in the name of the Queen. You owe a dollar sixty in fines, and we want that copy of the Kama Sutra back. Please, Corporal, let me keep it just a little longer. Yes, do you know how it is, Corporal? A man alone without women in the long Arctic winter? Or oh, this year, little Kama Sutra? Why, Frenchy, you've... you've made a little dress for it. You've... is that a... No, I can't believe you it's a... You can't believe it's a wedding dress, eh? See for yourself, Corporal. I make that from an old flower sack. You mean... That's right, Corporal. Frenchy and this little Kama Sutra book, 
we're gonna get married. And we wait for you to perform the ceremony. I'm authorized by the queen to perform marriages, yes, but not between a man and a book, Frenchy. Oh, Corporal, can you not bend the rules for old Frenchy and his little Kama Sutra? Corporal, she is everything to me. Well, this is highly irregular, Frenchy, and you'll have to pay the full retail price of the book. Plus a double fine, making it, let's see, a double fine on four and a half. It is now several hours later, and Corporal McInerney and his wonder moose, Yukon Gwen, are headed back to Dawson City for their next assignment. Hmm, it's growing late, Yukon Gwen, and the blizzard's getting worse. <clears throat> Look up ahead, Yukon Gwen. The Klondike Motel. We could get us a nice cozy room for the night, then start our first thing tomorrow morning. Nobody's going to miss us tonight. You can just stand outside while I go in and register. I mean, who's going to know? You know, Gwen, up here in the Arctic, a man gets lonely. Listen in again for the further adventures of Corporal McInerney of the Royal Northwest Mounted Library Police and his wonder moose... Yukon Gwen. Oh, Gwen, you're wonderful.
Every American who has ever nodded out to the sensitive whining of Neil Young knows that Neil is an imported Canadian songbird in the great tradition of Joni Mitchell and Giselle McKenzie. But what most Americans and many Canadians do not know is that there is a thriving music scene in the French-speaking province of Quebec. Against the onslaught of North American pop schlock, the minstrels of French Canada struggle to maintain their roots and cultural integrity. Here, by way of tribute, is a medley of Québécois folk music. Sur une plage, il y avait une belle fille Qui avait peur d'aller prendre son bain Elle craignait de quitter sa cabine Elle tremblait de montrer aux voisins Un, deux, trois, elle tremblait de montrer quoi Son petit Elle mettait pour la première fois un Un bikini rouge et jaune à petit Un, deux, trois, voilà ce qui arriva. Maintenant, il est trop tard. C'est parti. Tout étoilé vient d'ouvrir l'immensité. Supercalifragilistique, expialidocio Ce mot est un vrai calvaire pour les palais chatouilles Mais si vous le dites d'un trait, vous devenez prodigieux Supercalifragilistique, expialidocio Sinon tout fait semaine où il faudra chercher Quelque chose de nouveau pour pouvoir s'amuser Imaginons-nous sur le bord de la mer Et tout un mètre de retour sur mon bateau Oui, oui, baby Quick Canada Quiz. What was number one on the Canadian hit parade when Wake Up Little Susie was number one on the American hit parade? Who knows? But six months later, it was Wake Up Little Susie. Here's more of the National Lampoon Radio Hour. On XM Comedy, one hip. Quick Canada Quiz. What was number one on the Canadian hit parade when Wake Up Little Susie was number one on the American hit parade? We'll be right back to the answer to this question after this commercial message. What was number one on the Canadian hit parade when Wake Up Little Susie was number one on the American hit parade? Who knows? But six months later, it was Wake Up Little Susie. The Maple Leaf Megaphone Newsreel marches through customs, into Canada, and right back out again with nothing to declare. Banff, Alberta. And here in Western Canada's unspoiled Rocky Mountain playground, members of the sinister Canadian Nazi party meet in their annual rally. The strutting bay shirts gather to stage a book burning of Canadian authors' works, but call off their plans when not enough books can be found to start a fire. Would-be burners of possible books, the sinister Canadian Nazi party meeting in Banff, Alberta. Moose Factory, and blood stains the snow in this isolated sub-Arctic community as Royal Canadian Mounties battle Eskimos after being sent to repossess an iron lung. 
Softened by lush living off the profits of their soap carvings, Moose Factory's Eskimo tribe had gone on an iron lung shopping spree. This tubercular 98-year-old Eskimo woman is dragged from her iron lung and out into the cold where she belongs. As husky dogs bark and a finance company representative adds up interest charges. Royal Canadian Mounties doing their duty as always in the blood-stained northern tundra. Ottawa. A moving spectacle unfolds in the Senate of the Canadian Parliament as attendants remove the venerable 104-year-old Senator Cornish Wallaby from the bench where he had sat undetected for the past 35 years. Listed as dead in Senate records, the grand old man of Canadian Parliament was discovered during the current recess by a cleaning lady. All Parliament Hill applauds the 104-year-old Senator Cornish Wallaby on his way to the ambulance. Canada's own Rip Van Winkle, found fast asleep in the Senate. Toronto and 25 of Canada's greatest pro hockey stars arrive to match wits against retarded children in a charity spelling bee. Thousands of eager Torontonians strain to catch a glimpse of their favorite players and its Stanley Cup tension as competition gets underway. Our Maple Leaf Megaphone Newsreel camera catches the concentration on the faces of the contestants and the disappointment as all 25 of Canada's greatest pro hockey stars lose out in the qualifying rounds. Little Jimmy is a happy mongoloid and a champion speller. Pro hockey stars lose out to retarded children in a charity spelling bee. Truro, Nova Scotia, and Canadian Department of Transport icebreakers prepared to embark on another vital mission to try and find the province of Newfoundland, missing in the fog-shrouded Atlantic wastes for more than 15 years. Previous expeditions have had to turn back empty-handed, but hope runs high that this time Canada's 10th and newest province will be located at last. Rescue ships setting to sea in search of the missing province of Newfoundland. Kamloops, British Columbia, and the Lord Tweedsmuir Games, featuring North America's third largest indoor checkers tournament, are interrupted by the appearance of a strange furry creature known in legend as the Sasquatch Monster. Our Maple Leaf Megaphone newsreel camera catches a fleeting glimpse of the half-human, half-animal beast as children run and dogs bark hysterically. But order is quickly restored as officials discover that the Sasquatch monster is only Miss Kamloops for 1974. A happy ending to a moment of panic at the Lord Tweedsmuir Games in Kamloops, British Columbia. The Maple Leaf Megaphone Newsreel marches through customs into Canada and right back out again with nothing to declare. You are listening to the National Lampoon Radio Hour. Imitation. 
imitation of myself. I've made my last withdrawal from the blood bank to paint it. Suitcase full of parachutes, lace valentines, and hero suits got lost or stolen down the road a mile. I'm a madman for asylum. I'm a junkie for. Prose and poetry upon your naked shell. I'm the picture on your mirror. I'm the record on your spindle. I'm a perfect imitation of myself. Quick Canada quiz. What do you say to a Canadian who has just come into a little money? Bring me back a carton of Luckies. You know we're very happy that CBC, the Television Network of Canada, are carrying our show through all of Canada. And for our Canadian viewers, we're going to feature our twin pianos now and play the Make Believe Rag. Well, we've had a lot of fun with Canada tonight. A few laughs, a few wisecracks. But seriously, we Americans feel that if every country were as friendly and peaceful and cooperative as Canada, we wouldn't have to go around overthrowing, bombing, spying on, and invading countries. So, as a gesture towards those cooperative Canucks, the following people who produce the night show have signed their names to the Good Nigger Policy: Polly Beer, Chevy Chase, Chris Guest, Janet Hirsch. Lou Holtzman, Judy Jacklin, Paul Jacob, Sean Kelly, Bruce McCall, Brian McConaughey, Bob Perry, Tony Sheeran, Ed Sabitsky, Vernon Taft, Jerry Tehyden, John Wall, and Bob Tischler. Keep a quad medley by Danielle Girard. 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 Ferdinand Gignac. Fernand Gignac. Fernand Gignac. Andre Marcou. Marcou. Cleo Mo. Mo. Cleo Mo. Lynn Renard. Lynn Renault, and it's Quebecois. 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 Yeah. You've been listening to the National Lampoon Radio Hour. Tune in next time for more lamp. On XM Comedy 150.